It was cool and windy today, but racing fans still got a taste of Grand Prix racing at the new track in Addison. In the Sports 2000 paddock, fans found a familiar face with a familiar number 34 in his car. His name is Walter Payton, who is competing in his first pro race. It's not a hobby, it's just something that, uh, that I have to do for myself. Let me get over here. Tell me what I'm doing wrong when I come back. Okay. Peyton has the natural coordination and the mental discipline that drivers need to compete. But in the afternoon practice session, Peyton found himself pressing too hard in the final turn. He says he is learning with every lap. Still in learning process there. Because every track you go to for me has been different tracks. This is the first time here and first time for a lot of guys. But everything is different. So you have to get, a, you have to adjust the car. You have to adjust yourself. and. Uh, it depends on the weather, whatever. So every time you go out, it's a learning experience. Eventually, we want to get to uh, Le Mans, 24 hours at Le Mans. Is that, is that the goal you have in that's, mind? That's my goal. That's where I want to go. Speed and reaction have always been part of Peyton's life. After all, that's how he became a household name. But this is racing, and it is a little different, and will take some getting used to. In 1987, Walter Peyton closed out his extraordinary 13-year career as the NFL's all-time leading rusher. Yet the number 34 hasn't exactly been retired. It's just been moved from the gridiron to the racing grid. It's a dream of mine that I'm just going at because football for me for 17, 18 years was basically it. I never had a chance to do anything else. And now that I have the chance, I have my health, my mental width about myself, I might as well go ahead and do it. Peyton has transferred qualities which made him successful in football to his new career. Balance, concentration, and hand-eye coordination give Peyton an edge. But perhaps his greatest asset is his competitiveness. If Walter wants to be the best at race car driving, he will be the best. I've made up my, I, I know that about Walter. When he makes up his mind to do something, he does it. Since he was an NFL rookie in 1975, Walter Payton has worked longer and harder at his craft than those with lesser talents. Now he's a rookie all over again. And while he wants to excel on the IMSA circuit and those in the sport think he can, it takes commitment. And the big question is, does he have the time to be that devoted to racing? It's hard. You need to spend the time. And his schedule is so crazy. I mean, all these guys, they're here testing, testing, and testing. He goes in, hop in the car, and drive. You can't expect him to be up front. Peyton is also a highly successful entrepreneur, and his 28 nightclubs take up his time as well. But he's not just a celebrity dabbling in a new hobby. He's a world-class athlete who's gaining respect in another sport. I respect him, you know, and uh, he's going to accomplish a lot more. And certainly I admire him because of, of Walter Payton, but I, I think I, I like him for a race car driver. I take my hat off to him because, you know, he could go and head for Club Med, lay out on the beach, and, and chase savages all day. And you're breaking from a very high speed, which you haven't done in this car before. Yeah. Peyton is serious about racing, and he's maximizing his experiences by driving two different cars, an old Calais and a Sports 2000. He's thankful he's found a new challenge, which has helped ease the difficult transition to life after football. Being away from him for two years, you know, it's not going to be, you know, like, well, it's out of your system. No, I get those flashbacks, especially when I cross the, uh, the Illinois-Wisconsin uh, border. I thought about Green Bay. I said, oh, no, no. In the future, when he crosses into Wisconsin, maybe he'll think more about racing than running as he gets closer to his ultimate goal, driving in the 24 hours of Le Mans. In Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, I'm Andrea Kramer, ESPN. The costumes of the paddock crowd and the trinkets they carried were a dead giveaway. This was the long-awaited first professional race for retired Chicago Bear Walter Payton. After concluding his Hall of Fame career, the most productive running back in NFL history has brought his skills to the racetrack, where he freely admits to a need for speed. What I uh, tried to do is get into it gradually. What uh, Uvi, uh, who's uh, over the racing team, Uvi Olsen, he convinced me to uh, try my skills out on the track and not the street. The only thing I, you know, I, I got to keep uh, keep telling myself, don't worry about the cops, don't worry about the cops, don't worry about there on the track. And sweetness thus sums up what a lot of us feel is racing's greatest appeal: go fast with no cops. 
and go fast he did, qualifying eighth in a big 39-car field. Unfortunately, an engine problem threw Walter for a loss with just three laps to go. Despite that painful introduction to the difficulties of the sport, Peyton is committed to the Sports 2000 class and plans to run the entire Wolverine series in 1989. The former quarterback Dan Pastorini was the first big-name football hero to trade his football helmet for a driver's helmet. But a very well-known halfback is also making the switch. Walter Payton, the NFL's all-time leading rusher and holder of several other records, debuted his professional racing career in Elkhart Lake. <laughs> what we try to do now is shoot for Rookie of the Year, then we'd let everything else follow. Now, confident talk, but you must have gotten some advice along the way, like what the Gipper tell you. Don't worry about the cops. Don't worry about the cops. Good. Any other words of wisdom? It doesn't matter what the other drivers do as long as you uh, concentrate on the track. Well, your concentration obviously slipped, as did your car here, but after reversing your field, you were able to continue, at least until your engine fumbled, ending your debut in a cloud of smoke. You know, before his engine problems, Waller demonstrated a little bit of ability behind the wheel, qualifying eighth fastest, and this was his first professional event ever. <laughs> Inside of Tommy Archer's car, now he is back behind George Robinson. Walter Payton has had a little shunt with the tire barrier. He looks gets... like he's okay. He's down there in that escape room. He's on the car. Walter's been sort of under the weather. We talked to him before the race, and he's had the flu for about three or four days, not really feeling 100%, but he said he thought that this getting in the car would be pretty good medicine for him, help him out today, but he certainly had his hands full early on there. Take a look again and see Walter Payton following his teammate, Jerry Clinton. Clinton makes the left-hand turn. Payton. He just got in there a little too deep under braking, locked the brakes up, and that's all it takes on the street circuit. If you're off a little bit, it, uh, it gets you right in trouble. Back at Sears Point, but under caution, Walter Payton up on a tire barrier. The track crew there peeling the front body work away. Payton's okay. He's out of the car looking around. Right before that incident, we had other trouble on the course. Bill Saunders and the Highway Master Dodge nose first into the tire. Room for the day, looks like. Bill Saunders, the Dallas-based driver, done for the afternoon, as is Walter Payton and his Ford. Payton had a good run going today, but he's done for the afternoon. His Tom Boy Mustang going in on the hook. These cars are a little different from what you might see on the windscreen.